We have to be careful, and that's what I'm talking about today, not to be changed by our emotions, doubts, fear, unconcern, uh, uh, unknowing uh, uh, factors that come into our hearts. If you're going to be changed, be changed by the word of God. Let that word change you. We have an example of that in the Bible. In the New Testament, John the Baptist, solid, strong, anointed, super anointed. But there came a moment when doubt set in and he started to move by his emotion and fear started to set, fear that he had missed the mark, fear that he had wasted his time because he straddled away from, from the word. Now, as John the Baptist wrestled with this doubt in his mind, he sent, you know the story, he sent two of his disciples to Jesus to ask, of all the questions, are you really the Christ? Are you really the Christ? See, and we, we get that way sometimes. Don't beat yourself up. Is all that word really real? Come on. Can I really lay hands upon the sick? and they shall recover? Can I really cast out demons? And the longer you stay away from the word, the more there's a potential for that doubt and emotions to start controlling your thoughts in your life. We're facing one of those times right now. We're facing one of those times. I already told you, the Bible's already told you, in the season that you and I are living in, it's gonna be like birth pains going to be one thing after another thing after another thing after another thing after another thing. We've had three shootings that have made everybody go crazy. One after the other. I'm saying, wait a minute here, wait a minute. What's going on here? Something's something not up. The world needs your light now more than ever, ever before. Amen. It's just full of darkness. Matthew's account of, of John's doubt simply recorded John's disciples asking the question and Jesus answering them. But in the book of Luke, here in that account, we see that before Jesus answered John the Baptist's disciples, he performed many miracles. I want to take you to the book of Luke. This is important. See, if, if emotions and doubt and confusion could set into John the Baptist, who was extremely anointed, then if you and I are not careful, they'll, they'll, they'll creep into us. We are different, folks. We're not like the world. Our citizenship is in heaven. Hello? Are you with me? Hello? See, if you go to Mexico, I don't know if any of you been, or all of you been to Mexico or not, but if you go to Mexico and you see all the crazy stuff that's going down, not crazy by my perception anyway, that's going down in those towns, and you see people going through things, and one thing that gives you security is knowing that you're not a citizen of, of Mexico. Amen? You can say, well, these people can go so far. Come on. But I'm, I'm a citizen of America. So I, I, I experience something different and I expect different treatment. And it's the same thing with the body of Christ. We are not like everybody else. Amen. We gotta get a hold of that. Amen. But we keep expecting to move and act and circumstances to affect us like everybody else and that, that should not be. We need to just step on, look, just step on in there. Just step on in there. Just step on in there. I don't know how to say that. I, don't, I, don't, I just don't know how to put that and, and to make folks understand that. Hallelujah. I just don't know how to do that at all. Went to jail in Mexico, scared. But I knew, 17 years old, but I knew that somehow, some way, my country was going to free me. I only stayed there a few hours. Thank God. Amen. Because there were Mexicans that had been in there a lot longer than that. 
And if you want to go to jail, don't go to jail in Mexico. Amen? It is not like American jails. But I knew that I was different. Scared, but I was different. In a few hours, my expectations were met, and I was out of there, and I was able to go and, and do some other things that, that I needed to do. You are different. You're different. You can't be changed by your emotions that the devil tries to set you up on. Come on now. Even in a situation that we're dealing with all this, this, this racism and, you know, Black Lives Matter stuff. Listen to me. Come on, please. If you get caught up in, in a moment, you, you will lose your authority. I'm not belittling anything that is happening or anything like that. But you are different. Yeah. You are a saved person who happens to be black. Right. Or you better get a hold of that thing. Right. You've got to get a hold of it. You've got to get a hold of it. Otherwise, you will not, you will not have any light to share on any area of darkness that come in, into your presence. You are a saved person who happens to be black. The Bible says, listen, in Christ there's no, no G Greek or Jews. Come on, you remember that? No males or females. Amen. In, in other words, listen, in Christ, look, we're all one. Amen. Those that's in Christ. Don't get caught up in emotional stuff. Look at Luke. We can talk about that for an hour. We've been conditioned, brothers and sisters, to move by our emotions. And we can't do that. We need to constantly ask ourselves about every situation that comes up, what does the word say? Not what does CNN say, what does the word say? Hello? Amen. What does the word say? What is the Holy Spirit saying to me personally? Luke chapter 7, look at John the Baptist. Starting with verse 20. When the men were coming to him, they said, John, John the Baptist has sent us unto you, saying, they were coming to Jesus, are you he that should come? Or look we for another. And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. And to many that were blind he gave sight. 22. Then Jesus answered and said unto them, go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the leopards are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. 23. And blessed is he, whosoever shall not be offended in me. And when the messengers of John were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. And this is what he said. He said, what did you go out in the wilderness to see when you went out there to see John? Did you go out there to see a reed shaken by the wind? What did you go out there? To, what were you expecting? See, in that, that, that passage of scripture, he says, in the same hour, and when he said in the same hour, that implies, listen to me now, that implies that for nearly an hour, Jesus didn't answer John the Baptist's disciples. What did he do? He performed all of these healings and deliverance miracles. He didn't answer them. They asked him, he says, uh, John said, are you the one? Uh, should we look for another? And Jesus doesn't answer them for almost an hour. He doesn't answer, doesn't say anything. Then he told these disciples to go back and tell John the Baptist what they had just seen and heard. You see, many have seen multiple miracles within a short period of time. But the Lord crammed, let me tell you what the Lord crammed in that hour. He crammed raising people from the dead. He crammed blind eyes opening, deaf ears hearing, and the lame walking all into one hour. One hour. They say, Jesus, John said, are you the one? Jesus said, look, you, you, sit, sit right there. Just sit right here. Just hang on in there. Stay behind me. Stay close now. Just stay close. Then I'll answer that question. Or I'll tell you what to do. 
Now imagine that impact that would have on you in one hour, even in this local church. Imagine that impact. Revival's coming, folks. Yes, it is. Hallelujah. And that just came on up out of my spirit. Revival is coming. Amen. Revival is coming. Yes, it is. And you're going to see all this Amen. in one hour. Hallelujah. God is a good God. If Jesus wasn't the Christ, then John the Baptist had squandered the anointing that was on his life, which nobody else in the history of the world had ever, ever had. John the Baptist was an anointed soul, and Jesus tells everybody that. He could have been an instrument, listen to me, of the devil instead. <coughs> Instead of the instrument of God, he could have been. But this doubt that Jonathan, that not Jonathan, but John the Baptist had, this doubt wasn't just some sort of passing or flipping doubt. This was a crisis situation unlike any other in John the Baptist's life. He had to know, are you the one? See, he knew before he went in jail, but now emotions was coming up. Prior, prior to the COVID-19, we, we knew who God was in us. We knew who we were in us. But you sit in that thing long, you know, two, three months almost, not gathering together yourselves for corporate prayer and corporate worship. Some of us may not even been praying at all. Some of us may not even been opening the Bible to pay six. And then all of a sudden, all this doubt and fear and emotion starts setting in, just like John the Baptist. Mmm. 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 How did Jesus respond? He said, go tell them what, you, what you've seen and what you heard. I'm not explaining anything. Go tell them. Then after John's disciples had departed, you know what Jesus started doing? Jesus started saying good stuff about John the Baptist. He said that John the Baptist was the greatest, <laughs> greatest person in any person in the Old Testament, including Moses, including Elijah, including Elisha, including Isaiah, including Jeremiah. Amen. Ha! Now, that's some pretty powerful words to be spoken by a man who was the most popular figure around at that time. Jesus said, listen, there's no, there was nobody uh, uh, more, more powerful or more anointed than John the Baptist. Hallelujah. But there was John the Baptist, rotting in prison, <laughs> feeling lonely. And wondering, I know what he was wondering. He was wondering, he had a question in mind. He was saying, well, what about me? I had a six-month ministry. And since then, I've been rotting in this prison. Does anybody remember me? Hallelujah. Does anybody even care? I know all this stuff started going through John the Baptist's mind. Instead of him focusing on the word of God, come on. And, and we're doing the same thing. I'm talking about we as a body of Christ right now. We're, we're doing the same thing. Amen. Instead of focusing on the word of God, we're letting our emotions change us instead of the word of God. <laughs> you see, when I saw this crisis situation that John the Baptist was in and how the Lord treated his disciples, ignoring them for an hour, I'm puzzled. What in the world? Come on, just tell the boys what they want to know. Healing these other people and then sending those disciples back with that message. You know what I thought? I thought, God, that just doesn't seem to meet the need. <laughs> that, 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 why? You didn't even answer these guys. Then you tell them, go tell John the Baptist what you've seen and heard. Then after John the Baptist's disciples had actually left, come on, he began to give all these compliments about John the Baptist. And I say in my mind, well, Jesus, why didn't you just say that when the disciples was there? That would have probably made them and John feel that much better. But you know what happened? One day I was reading through the scriptures in Isaiah and I ran into this scripture. And I want to share this scripture with you. 
is Isaiah chapter 35, verse 3 through 6. And this is what the scripture is saying. Now, Jesus has already said that John the Baptist was greater than Isaiah and all those other prophets. This is how the word says. It says, strengthen ye the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. This is a prophecy about the Messiah. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. And what will happen when he come? Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. And the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart. And the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out. And streams in the desert. Then all after reading this all of a sudden. The Holy Spirit reminded me of what Jesus had said to John's disciples. And how he spent an hour doing these miracles that's in that book of Isaiah. Doing what Isaiah had prophesied that the Messiah would be doing. <laughs> in one hour, Jesus did everything that was prophesied according, concerning the miracles that the Messiah would do. In one hour. Plus he added raising somebody from the dead. Then Jesus told John's disciple to go back and to John and tell him that he had done all these things and that he had blessed, that he'd be blessed rather, if he would just believe. What was Jesus doing? Jesus was pointing John the Baptist back to the word of God. You see, John knew the scriptures. He knew the word. He knew the word. You know the word. Even before, listen, even before COVID-19 set in, you knew the word. The word hasn't changed. The Bible says Jesus Christ the same yesterday as he is today, as he's going to be tomorrow. The word hasn't changed. John the Baptist knew the word. Come on. John had quoted from another uh, a passage of scriptures all around this Isaiah passage. John the Baptist knew the word. So why is all this doubt, fear, unbelief, confusion, moving by emotions, setting in? I can tell you why it's setting in, because they had moved away from the word. The greatest prophet that ever lived, according to Jesus Christ. But if it could happen to him, it could happen to us. God don't want us to be moved by our emotions, folks. Minister Delana talked about the fact that we don't have to be afraid. What are you afraid of? What are you afraid of? Well, preacher, I'm afraid I'm going to catch it. <laughs> well, listen, if you catch it, you're going to be cured. Amen. Hello? Amen. If you catch it, you're going to get cured. How can you say that? Because listen, if, if your assignment is not complete, Come on. you can't go nowhere. That's yeah, right. Amen. That's right. You can't go nowhere. If you're willing and obedient to fulfill your assignment, mm. now if you're just living for you, you may go any day. Yes. <laughs> so you need to make a pledge today. Listen, I'm living for the assignment. Whatever God called me here on planet Earth to accomplish, listen, I'm all about that. Wherever, wherever the Holy Ghost leads me, I'm going. Whatever the Holy Ghost tells me to say, I'm going to do it. You need to take that attitude because if you don't, let me tell you something. The devil can throw something, something at you. Those old people say, listen, the old people used to say, listen, boy, somebody put something on you, something water can't get off of you. <laughs> if you. If you're not living with that mindset, the devil can throw things on you that'll take you out of here. It don't necessarily mean you're going to hell. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present. present with the Lord. But who wants to leave out of here without our assignment being completed? We need to be living sacrifices on the altar of life. God is a good God. I believe that when John's disciples delivered Jesus' message to him, I believe the Holy Spirit connected with Isaiah had prophesied about the Messiah and what Jesus 
had just done. I, I, I think he hooked that word back up with John. And you and I need to make sure we stay connected to that word. Amen. 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 If you were redeemed before the uh, coronavirus, you're redeemed now. Amen. You're redeemed from all sickness, diseases, and disorders of the mind and the body. Hello. The world needs to see light now more than ever before in our lifetime. They need to see a difference. I'm not talking about you putting people down and, 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 and making them think that bad about themselves because your faith is at another level. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you believing this word to the point where you're not moved by your emotions. But you're moved by the word of God. I believe that the light came on and John realized. I believe John said something like, how could I doubt that this was the Messiah? Hallelujah. See, when the light comes on, listen. When the light comes on, I believe in your mind. You'll be asking yourself, how could I even think that this COVID-19 could take me out? How could that even cross my mind? Amen. How? How? You know, you know the thought that came to me. Listen, listen to me. The thought that came to me. We thought, and I thought about the rapture when God says, uh, "No man knows the day or the hour or the time." All right. I, I was asking myself the other day. Okay, when will the threat of this be over? What the date? What day? What day? So I can put it on my calendar. What day? What day? Does anybody know what day? So how long is the body of Christ going to be moved by their emotions? Unless you know the day. Unless you can say next Tuesday it's going to be over. This, listen, this is a respiratory virus. They don't leave planet Earth. That's why every, every fall and every winter, we're dealing with influenza. Because it don't leave planet Earth. Their environment is just more conducive for it showing back up. So at what time will the body of Christ say, all right, I, I don't have to be moved by my emotions anymore. I'm going to stand on the word. I suggest to you today. I suggest to you today. Are you with me? I'm not telling you not to take any precaution that you've got a piece about taking. But don't be moved by your emotions. Move, be moved by the word of God. Or if you could simply believe that you're not getting out of here till your assignment's done, that, that's enough. That's enough to keep you whole and healthy. Whole and healthy. Amen. Right, listen, right now the world don't want people 65 and over, older to do nothing. To go anywhere. To see anybody. <laughs> Come on. I believe John, John the Baptist came to his senses and said, how could I doubt that this was the Messiah? I believe he said, he, this man has performed everything the word of God prophesied he would do. When he got back in the word, hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, no other man had opened up blind eyes, unstopped deaf ears, enabled the lame to walk, and caused dumb tongues to, to speak, speak out of the same, especially not in one hour's time. He even raised the dead. I believe Jesus would say, come here. <laughs> you know, in John 1 and 1, Jesus said, I, he's talking about Jesus being the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was in God, and the word was. I believe Jesus was telling John the Baptist's disciple, come on, follow me. I'm going to show you something. I know that you have separated yourself from the word. Therefore, you're moving by your emotions. But I'm going to just show you something. I ain't going to try to preach to you. I ain't going to try to demonstrate it. I'm going to just show you something. I believe the Holy Spirit came in like a flood and washed away all of John the Baptist's doubts. Soon, soon, look, cause, cause what, what his disciples saw was, was a manifestation of the word. The word. It's all about the word. I think sometimes we all want an emotional boost. And you might want that boost, like having somebody put their arms around you and, and cry with you, you know, during your times of emotions and whatever. I'm not saying that no one should show you compassion. I'm not saying that at all. But instead of wanting something emotional, 
that will make you feel good today. But then tomorrow you'll need another emotional fix. You need to take the truth of God's word. You want to take some medicine? Take the word. Take the word. Take the word. I will not be conquered during this season. I will not be conquered. I will not be conquered. And you should not either. You're children of God. Get in that word until that word changes you, the way you think. Whether you feel like it or not, you need to just kind of stand up inside of you and start saying, I am an overcomer in Christ Jesus. I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. Come on, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. I don't care what I feel like, what somebody else has said. I don't care or what has happened to me. I don't care. I'm an overcomer. You need to tell yourself inside, I'm going to rise again. Listen. Hallelujah. I'm going to be all right. Listen, I'm going to be all right. Hallelujah. I'm a victor and not a victim. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. There's, another, there's another crisis coming. Now, you can write that down right in the last page of your, of your book in your pocketbook. There's another crisis coming. It may not be tomorrow. But by the very fact that I'm saying it, you're going to see it. What you going to do then? What you going to do? And I think every crisis, let me tell you something. I think every crisis that we, have to, that we experience in the upcoming future is going to drive more and more people to Christ. Amen? Especially if they see you standing. Especially if they see you not moving by your emotions. Especially if they see that you have a foundation. And that foundation is working for you. I believe it's going to just bring them in. And before you know it, revival is just going to be facing us in the face. I don't believe it's going to, revival is going to come because of any particular thing we do other than regular prayer. But I believe you're going to see another crisis. And another crisis. And another crisis. Now the devil means it for harm, but I believe God's going to use it for good. And when those crises come, they're going to need to see at least a group of people that are not moving by their emotions, but standing on the word of God. If that's you, or should God look for another? Hallelujah. God is a good God all the time. Hallelujah. Start taking God's word and applying it to your situation. Start speaking the word and letting the word build yourself up. Let me, let me just say this. Listen. If you're saved, do we got any saved people here? Raise your hand if you're saved. Amen. Got a few of them in here. Listen, if you're saved, you got to start believing that you're saved. Start believing that you are a victor. If you're saved, you got to come to the point where you realize, listen, that your life is not your own. That you've been bought with a price. And the only reason you're living is to do the will of God. The only reason you're living is to do the will of God and to spread his glory wherever you're at. It's the only reason you're living. Now, if you get a little pleasure in between those valley times, that's good. God don't mind you having a little bit of pressure, pleasure, but don't live for those pleasures. The only reason you're living is to do the will of God. Amen? Amen. The only reason. And when you get that mindset, everything changes. Everything changes. Hallelujah. You don't even have to, you don't even have to worry about all of that other stuff. I'm just jumping off another subject here. But look, you don't even have to worry about that. That's why God tells us in Matthew chapter 6, listen, seek ye first, what? The kingdom of God and his righteousness and all of that other stuff. And if you read the verses before that, it talks about why you worried about this and why you worried about that and why you worried about this and why you worried about that and why are you worried about that one and why are you worried about that? Come on. If you're a child of God, of course your rent's going to be paid. Of course you're going to be fed. Of course, if you need a car, you're going to have transportation. That's a given. You don't have to worry about that. Well, you say, preacher, you don't know what's in my pocketbook. I don't care. Come on. Because the word doesn't change. God says, I've been young and I've been old, but I've never... Never seen a righteous forsaken or a seed begging bread. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 
When you face those challenges, just say, all right, praise him. It's done. I don't know how God's going to do it, but it's a done deal. Yes. Just do what the Holy Ghost tells you to do. Oh, this thing is so good. Yes. It's so good. John the Baptist had taken his eyes off the word, off of the truth that God had instilled in his heart, and he starts to doubt. And you will, too, when you get away from the word. When you start listening to the news and listen to your neighbors and listen to your co-workers, instead of, instead of pumping that word inside you, you'll be controlled by your emotions. Jesus referred John the Baptist back to the word. That's what he was doing when he said, go tell John what you've seen and what you heard. See, because John the Baptist knew the word. And so Jesus was referring him back to the word, the word that he was well acquainted with. Eventually, listen, listen, just like the rest of us, John the Baptist came to his end because his assignment was over. Amen. Hello. His assignment was over. What, about 33 years old? His assignment was over. Herod beheaded, behe beheaded him, cut his head off. Cut his head off. But let me tell you something. When, it, when that happened, there was no whimpering. There was no crying. There was no renouncing of his belief. <laughs> Hallelujah. John the Baptist stayed strong. Amen. Why? Because he knew the word. The word says to be absent from the body. And once again, to be. There was no whimpering, no crying. John the Baptist knew that he had done his assignment. He had ushered in the way of the Lord. That was, that's why he was born. And then he was, he was, he was, it was confirmed to him that the Messiah was on, on, on the station. Hallelujah. Regardless of how his emotion made him feel, John got his thoughts back on the truth. Have you got your thoughts, excuse me, back on the truth? Are you still scared? You're still scared. What are you scared of? You need to do everything you can to make people feel safe around you. Amen. But you don't need to be scared. Scared of what? Well, I might get it. Well, you ever had the measles, the mumps, the chicken pops? You had that? I mean, you ain't scared of the measles, the mumps, or the chicken pops. Scared of what? Well, I might get it. Yeah, you might. But if you get it in your assignment not complete, it's going to be taken care of, and then you're just going to keep on going. Hello? You're just going to keep on going. And if you get it, listen, it's just like those, those mumps and, and chicken pop. If you get it, you'll probably develop some sort of immunity to it in the future. You won't get it no more. Hello? Oh, I'm going to leave it alone. God. What God did for John the Baptist really encouraged me. See, if I was to go by my emotions, there are times when I, I feel like running away. You ever felt like running away? Disappearing? Amen. There used to be a song like that. Just hop on the bus, Gus. Remember that song? Let yourself go. Amen. There's time when life can do that to you. And you just feel like just getting, up, getting, up, getting away, disappearing. There's time when I feel like giving up and quitting. I'm saying, hey, man, what's, what in the world? You probably felt that way. You just ain't told nobody. Amen. But I've learned to go by the word and not by how I feel. Amen. This truth that's in the word, I know has changed me. And has worked in my life for several decades. Probably at least four decades. See, when you get that kind of attitude and the word of God begins to dominate you, then you will always overcome doubt. Amen. Your emotions won't, won't control you. You will always overcome it. You'll be walking in faith. And faith is seldom a feeling. Very seldom do you just feel the surge of, of boldness. At times, let me tell you, you will walk in the gift of faith. That's a, that's a whole different animal. However, most times, though, most times, when I've seen great things happen in my life, and I can talk about my life, 
it's because I've stepped out in faith. <laughs> you know, last week in the Bible study, we were talking about hope. And I, I realized that we may not have differentiated the, the two for, for you so that you'll understand the difference. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. So faith is based on something God said. Where hope is based on something God did. Come on, come on. I like that. Faith, and God just dropped that in my spirit. Faith is based on something God said. That's why faith come by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That's why your faith got to be based on something God said to you, either in his word or through a rima word to you. Faith is based upon something God said. Hope is based upon something God did. That's why in the Bible study last week we were talking about we have hope because of what God did through Jesus Christ and his resurrection. In other words, look, if he can do that, then he can do this. Amen. That's why I have hope. Hey, hey. Amen. Glory to God. And if he tells me to do something, then I know I can do it because he said it. That's right. That's where faith comes in. Yes, man. Faith comes. <laughs> faith is based. Don't miss that. Faith is based on something God said. Hope is based on something God did. Yeah. Hallelujah. God's a good God, folks. Yeah. That was worth coming here today. Hallelujah. Yeah. God is a good God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My emotions when I had to step out on faith weren't wavering, but I just chose not to go by them. But they were wavering, rather. You know, because you'll get to that point where you say, ah, you know, I feel this, I feel that, I feel this, I feel that. Don't go by that. Go by the word of God. Amen. Amen. Go by that. I knew what God's word says and ministers, ministered it from my heart. Then I stood on what the word of God said at the times I had to step out on faith. Sometimes sometime with my knees shaking. You ever done something and you're scared to do it, but you know you got to do it? But you know if God told you to do it, then you got to step out on faith. <laughs> Amen? You, you just got to do it. Some people think faith is just having an absence of any problems or an absence of doubt or an absence of fear. Brothers and sisters, that's not true. God can tell you to do some things and you're still scared to do it. But you got to do it anyhow. Amen. That's, right. hey, that's what faith's all about. That's right. James says, show me your faith that I'll show you your works. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's just learning how to reject those things and not let them control you as you take the stand on the word of God. Amen. During this season of un un uncertainty and challenge, don't be moved by your emotions. Don't do it. If some changes need to take place, let the changes be initiated by the word of God that comes into you. God is a good God all the time. Let me just pray over this word. Father, we just thank you for this word right now in the name of Jesus. You said in all of our ways, if we acknowledge you, you'll direct our path. Yes, Lord. We're acknowledging you, Lord. We're giving this situation, Lord, COVID-19 and every other issues that we're dealing with now, individually and as a culture, we're giving it to you, expecting you to guide our path. Yes. Now, Lord, look at the situations that we're being controlled and guided by our emotions. Help us to get deeper and deeper into the word until we start following your word and not our feelings. Lord, let it be done. Let it be done in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us for today's message. We know that the Word of God has been a blessing to you. To hear more messages, visit our website, www.ahoskychristian.com. If you would like to give a donation, you can do this on the website as well, or via Cash App, ACC209. Thank you for partnering with us. Until next time. God bless you.